Hello everyone, this is Sandral and welcome to part 2 of my Bafori Maple cosplay. In this video, I will be covering the gauntlets, the greaves, and the torso armor. The material that I'm using for this part of the cosplay is a 4mm EVA foam that I purchased from TNT Cosplay Supplies. Before I start in any of my armor, I made an EVA foam ruler after watching a video from a fellow YouTuber who goes by Evil Ted Smith and took a page out of his book. I measured mine to be about 24 inches long and half an inch wide, though the width wasn't necessary. With my EVA foam ruler, I laid my arm out on a flat surface and took the measurements of my wrist and just below the elbow, writing each measurement down before I used my regular ruler and measured from my wrist to just below the elbow and repeating the same thing. After all my measurements were taken, I took a piece of paper and folded it in half, marking the three measurements before cutting it out. Because I wanted the gauntlet to be even all the way around, I removed a quarter inch off the top and bottom parts of my template and from there I got my base pattern. With my base template, I laid it out on my EVA foam and drew around the pattern twice, making sure that I marked the little notches before cutting them out with my box cutter. Since I wanted my gauntlet to be double layered instead of single layered, I taped the base layer around my arm and measured around the wrist and just below the elbow with my EVA foam ruler, and then I measured the length of my arm with my regular ruler, adding an extra inch since the base was cut a little too short and the gauntlet that the character wears is longer than that. Similar to what I did with the first pattern, I marked my measurements onto a folded paper before connecting them together and cutting out a new template. I did use the original template as a guide for the curvature around the top of the gauntlet since it wasn't even all the way around, and I still wanted to give that extra length that I mentioned earlier. Because the opening where the hand comes out is wider than the wrist, I separated the template into two pieces and added a small triangular shape onto the interior of the right and left sides of the template, and the same triangular shapes on both sides of the center pattern. Actually, to get the right template, I had to split the center piece down so there were four pieces that made the entire gauntlet and the curve around the edge of the armor was even. Now that I have the correct pattern layout, I cut the excess paper around my template off and removed the discarded paper to the side before grabbing my EVA foam and marking each template twice with my sharpie, giving a small notch where the angular part of the armor met. To get the EVA armor right, I did flip both templates to get the right and the left sides, otherwise I would have ended up with four of the same shapes, and while this EVA foam sheet wasn't expensive, I didn't want to order more of it and wait for it to arrive. After cutting off the excess foam with a pair of scissors, it was time for me to cut out all of the shapes with my box cutter. To make it easier for me, I did flip around the pieces a couple of times and remove whatever was in the armor off to the side. So these were all the pieces that were going to make the arm portion of my gauntlet. Now to move on to the elbow section of this armor. I started off by using a small glass vase that had a circular opening and traced it onto a piece of paper before cutting it out and folding it in half. With a pair of scissors, I snipped off a small curve on both sides of the half circle before unfolding it to get this sort of convex shape. For the larger elbow piece that is going underneath the smaller elbow guard, I folded the circle back in half and on a piece of paper drew on a semicircle shape that was half an inch larger than the first template, marking a few notches before cutting it out. On some EVA foam fragments that were too big to toss, I marked my templates onto it, making sure to flip the larger template over to get both sides and then cutting it out with my box cutter. Once everything was cut out, I laid all of the pieces out for one gauntlet and applied a thin coat of rubber cement onto the edges to had the mark notches. The brand that I'm using is Elmer's Craft Bond, which I got from Joann's for about 4 bucks, but with the power of coupons that can go down to 2 to 3 bucks. Warning: When using this particular glue, work in a ventilated area. I had my window open so the fumes didn't cause a problem, and after applying the glue, you should give it a few minutes to get tacky, otherwise the pieces won't stick together and it makes an all-around stinky mess. As soon as my glue was tacky, I pieced together my gauntlet, starting with the bracer and then the elbow guard. In total, I went from 18 pieces down to 4 pieces. Correction, 6 pieces, but a minor miscalculation on my part. To give the gauntlet more shape, I used my miniature heat gun and carefully applied heat onto the elbow and bracer pieces, getting them to curve instead of laying flat. Since some of my seams had small gaps after their heat and curving treatment, I used a product called Quick Seal, which is an adhesive chalk that can be smoothed down with a finger and water. After the Quick Seal was completely dried, I used my Dremel tool to bevel the edges of the elbow guard and around the top of the gauntlet. The sides and the bottoms didn't need the bevel since they were going to get a final trim around them. For the trims around the bottom and the front sides of the gauntlet, I used long half-inch strips of 4mm EVA foam that I cut out and wrapped around each segment before cutting them to size, leveling their edges, gluing them onto the gauntlet, and the last thing I did construction-wise with the gauntlet was attach the elbow guard onto the top of the bracer. 
And these were how the bracers turned out. On to the next part of my costume. To make the greaves, I started by making a template on my leg using saran wrap and masking tape. I learned this particular trick from an indie YouTuber who goes by Kamui Cosplay, and I would say this definitely worked to get a form-fitting template without any errors. Since it was best to do the next step standing, I used a mega-sized sharpie and began marking where I wanted the armor separation to go. I made three lines in total and made several little notches so I knew which end matched with each other. Once all of the areas were marked, I used a pair of scissors and carefully cut myself free from the saran wrap and masking tape burrito. Because I have a tendency of wanting to keep all of my templates on paper instead of keeping masking tape and saran wrap templates, I transferred my pattern onto paper before cutting them out. I also made sure to have the notches drawn out and then snipped from the template so I know which end goes with which end. It can get a little confusing piecing together a particular armor segment without a guide. To make the double layered shin guards that will be covering my knees, I used my elbow guard templates that I made earlier and enlarged them by half an inch to an inch of parameter before cutting the excess paper off and having my final template. This was also the same method that I used to make the fanned out armor piece that goes at the top of the shin guard. With all the paper templates made for the greaves, I marked them onto my EVA foam with my silver sharpie starting from the fanned out pieces of the shin guard then moving downward before alternating between my scissors and my box cutter to separate the pieces. And these are the final pieces that I have so far. Unlike the gauntlets that were double layered, I wanted the greaves to be a single layer and this was my outcome. In order to turn the armor from 2D to 3D, I used my rubber cement and brushed along the edges of the armor that were going to meet. Make sure to lay each piece flat to ensure that none of the pieces will accidentally stick to each other. Once the glue was tacky, I started piecing together the armor, beginning with the shin guards and then moving my way down to the greaves segments until they were all connected. Before gluing everything together, I used my Dremel and beveled along the edges of the shin guards, the top of the leg armor, and the bottom of the leg armor. Make sure to wear a respirator mask or have a vacuum cleaner nearby. This step can get pretty messy. The last thing I did before completing the construction of the greaves was giving the armor its final shape by using my heat gun. It was pretty easy shaping it once it got hot enough and I was able to roll it onto itself. And these are what the greaves look like. I'm very happy with the results, but there's still a lot of work to be done. On to the next part! Similar to what I did with the greaves, I used the saran wrap and masking tape method to get a form-fitting template before marking out where I wanted the seams to be and cutting myself free. With the template laid out as flat as possible, I fixed the rough sketch that I drew on my body and then separated them into the pieces that would make the base of my breastplate. After that, I did the same process of transferring my tape patterns onto paper, making sure to mark out where all the notches meet up before cutting them out, strategically placing them on my EVA foam and using my sharpie to draw out the shapes before cutting the excess parts off. And yes, I did make sure to flip the templates over so I can get the other side of my breastplate. It'd be weird going around with half a breastplate instead of a full one. Once all of the pieces were cut out, I used my rubber cement glue and brushed along the edges that were going to meet and waited a few minutes for the glue to get tacky before piecing them together. With the base of my breastplate complete, I used a saran wrap and masking tape method once more to get the final design that I wanted before cutting myself free, separating the template into five workable pieces and then transferring the tape pattern onto paper. After all of the pieces were drawn out, I cut out my paper templates and laid them out onto my EVA foam, marking each template out with my silver sharpie and removing the excess material off with my box cutter. I'll be honest, when it comes to previous cosplays that I've done, Maple so far has been my most difficult and time-consuming project. But she's also been quite enjoyable since I'm learning a lot of new techniques and working with a higher quality EVA foam. To complete the breastplate, I applied my rubber cement glue onto the base and separated pieces before piecing them together, starting from the back and moving my way towards the front. And this is the final breastplate. It's a little thicker than I anticipated, but it is surprisingly lightweight and keeps its shape. Now onto the final piece of this video. The last part of the cosplay that I'm going to cover in this video is the waist armor. So like the greaves in the breastplate, I turned myself into a saran and masking tip burrito, marked my pattern out with my red sharpie, cut myself out from the form-fitting template, and transferred it onto paper. With my paper templates ready to be used, I marked the patterns onto my EVA foam, making sure to mirror each piece to get the entire belt circumference before cutting the pieces out with my box cutter and removing the tiny excess pieces with my scissors. Once all of the pieces were cut out, I used my Dremel tool and beveled along the edges of all my belt pieces except for the one edge that was going to overlap. After dremeling and cleaning off the excess foam dust that accumulated, I used my rubber cement glue and brushed the ends of where the belt pieces were going to meet, the front and the back sides of the central belt decoration, and where the two thinner belt pieces were going to overlap. 
Making sure that the glue was tacky, I pieced together my belt bit by bit until the several little pieces turned into one beautiful garment. To get the bottom part of the belt that went above the separated panels, I used my measuring tape and went from where one end of the central front detail was to the other before marking the lengths required onto my EVA foam, cutting the pieces out with my box cutter and my straight edge to keep the lines uniform, creating the fan pieces that were going on the edges of this particular piece, dremeling all of the edges that were going to be seen, and gluing them together. For the panels to go around the bottom of the belt, this was more of a trial and error in which I looked at Mabel from the front and the back view and drew out a pattern similar to what was on her armor before cutting off the excess paper and taping them onto the belt to see what they look like. Since I wanted my panels to be wider, I went back in and altered my patterns until they were the correct shape and I got my final template. And this was when I realized that I didn't have enough EVA foam to create the entire belt, but thankfully my order of EVA foam that I was going to use for my shield arrived. So what I did was make the front and back panels with the remainder of my 4mm EVA foam and made the side panels using the 8mm EVA foam that was going to be used for my shield detailing. I know I wasn't going to use the entire foam sheet for that, so this worked out for my benefit. With all of my pieces cut out, I dremeled the edges of the panels until they had a smooth finish, made 4 beveled half inch strips of EVA foam that were going to go on top of the side panels, glued the strips onto the panels before attaching everything onto the belt, and finishing it off with velcro. So this is what the entire costume looks like so far. I know I didn't do much painting and I don't have the shoes and gloves, but I haven't forgotten them. Thank you for watching part 2 of my Maple cosplay and if you want more content like this, please subscribe and like this video. I'll see you in part 3. Ciao!